Chief Homesteading. I'm in the garage this morning and we're working on the homemade dust collection system. Last time we removed the engine and the impeller off the Billy Goat debris loader and this time we're going to weld up the frame and get it ready so we can install the uh, electric motor. I tracked down a Baldor three horsepower motor. It's well used. I got it from the same person that uh, sold me the Billy Goat debris loader. Between both of them I have $200 into it. Some people are going to say, you know, you can go to Harbor Freight or Princess Auto and get a dust collection system for $200, and you can. My goal is to have a high capacity dust collection system, and you just can't get that from Harbor Freight or Princess Auto, no matter how good they are. We're going to have to put that up there. So I'll show you what parts I'm using. This here is what you call a long story. Uh, I had a little project that never worked out and it was years and years and years ago and it was like gonna be a duck motor uh, It was gonna be a duck boat motor, but I have a Keyed shaft here that hasn't been used is just rusty. I got a pillow block there pillow block there Here's well this on here and well this on here pillow blocks from here so we can support the shaft to run through the hole gonna have to find where the center of the hole is so I'm gonna try to eyeball it okay so what I'm gonna do is measure from here to here that looks in the middle we're gonna drill the holes for the pillow blocks before I weld this I'm gonna make sure that the impeller spins and everything looks good um, so I, I'll have a little bit of movement back and forth. I can weld it a little bit this way or a little bit that way. So, uh, let's start marking up the pillow blocks. Okay, so here we are going to mark this one, the center. Get center here. If you look here on mine, there's a little casting mark to show center. I don't know if they all do that, but that's kind of handy. And then, and then we're gonna mark, and we are gonna mark the hole, and mark the hole here. We're gonna lift that off. And I'm gonna make sure this is in the center. This is a two inch, and this is center. This is two inch. Make sure you wear your safety glasses, and it definitely helps if you put it in a uh, drill press vise. It's easier to keep it flat when you're drilling.
try to find some bolts. I don't have the right bolts. I think I need four three and a half inch bolts. Okay, I'm back. I went to Home Hardware. That's a hardware store in Canada. I don't know if they have them in the US. I don't think they do. So, I got half inch bolts. And half inch bolts fit tightly into half inch drilled holes. So we're gonna tap them in, which, which kinda works. because it kind of keeps them in there somewhat permanently. We're going like this, we're gonna put our bearing in. We're gonna put this in here. Seems like I don't have a lock collar for the other bearing, so I'm gonna have to see if I can get one. So this is going to be the impeller shaft. I'm going to clean it up a little bit more. The bolt that holds the fan on is 7 16 national fine. The drill bit size you have to drill is 3 8 uh, So if you do it too tight, uh, the tap could bind up. Make sure you use your safety glasses. Not really ideal to uh, drill by hand, uh, but I don't have a drill press that I can put the shaft straight up in, so I pretty well have no other choice but to uh, eyeball it, and hopefully it comes out good. <laughs> Okay, so we gotta try to get this as straight as possible. The head. Okay, so let's see if the bolt threads in. Threads in real, real good. That's nice. This is the thing that really worried me and it came out pretty good. As long as it'll tighten up, I'm sitting pretty. Okay, she tightened up. I'm cleaning up the spots where I'm gonna weld. I'm taking the paint off. Uh, we're getting very, very close to uh, just welding this thing together. I hate welding in the shop, I really do. Uh, eventually I wanna put like tin on the walls and everything, uh, but I kind of, cornered it in. I put some cardboard up around and some uh, plywood uh, just so if any sparks go they can't just roll across the floor into the corners that you don't see. But yeah I just want to make sure that it's all good.
First thing I did was measure, so three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. So then we made sure this was in the center. So now we're gonna tack these temporarily, uh, just enough to hold it. Make sure you never final weld everything till you know it's in the place you want it to be. Um, because there's nothing worse than trying to cut welds and uh, move stuff after. Just tack everything in place. Once you know it works, then we will weld it in place permanently. So this is the welder my wife got me for Father's Day a few years ago. Um, the guy was getting divorced and he sold it for a really, really good price. So I haven't used it very much yet, but I can see this thing's gonna come in handy. Hobart's a good name. I believe it's owned by Miller, so they make good stuff for sure. Figure out what the setting should be. Steel and his flux core. And the biggest metal I got, the thickest metal I got is 3 16 And that, so the setting is four and 45. It is on four. And we will put it to 45. Always make sure you have an extinguisher ready. I tacked my first piece and uh, you know what? When you weld with a flux core welder, you'll notice it doesn't make half as good of a weld as um, a MIG welder with gas. So basically flux core burns off stuff in the wire and it creates the shield of gas until the weld cools. A MIG welder that has gas, it shoots gas down the wand and it shields it till it cools. Uh, a gas MIG welder makes so much nicer welds than a flux core. I wouldn't say stronger, um, but it definitely looks better anyways. Okay, so the first piece is welded in. We're gonna weld the second one in now. She's tacked in place temporarily. If she spins good, no issue there. And it's all looking good in there. Everything is tacked in place. It's kind of in its final location. It turns, doesn't make any weird noises. That is really, really good. Uh, now we're gonna install the motor bracket, the bracket that's gonna hold the electric motor. Everything's tacked in place and I'm pretty happy about the location of where it is. So I'm gonna do my final welds. That ain't so pretty, but the rest is just tacked. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna weld everything good. I'm gonna grind some welds because my motor is gonna sit right here.
I just start to get on a roll and then it blows the breaker. Uh, my garage, the worst part is most of my circuits are 15 amp. I don't have anything else to really plug into that's larger. Uh, so I think I'm gonna have to try to do a little bit of an upgrade to my uh, power to my garage, but I'm just gonna take my time at it and eventually we will get it done. This project has given me a whole bunch of problems the whole way, um, but it's finally welded up. We're gonna do a little bit of grinding, cleaning it up, and then we're gonna start mounting the motor and hooking up pulleys and that. Uh, this is when the fun stuff starts. This motor was on a cement mixer for the first part of its life and I really hope that it didn't do anything to it. Uh, you know, you've got a ton of fine dust uh, landing on it all the time when they're filling it up and uh, I hope it didn't do anything to the armature but these Baldor motors are awesome and it feels really smooth so I'm sure it's good. It kind of shows how old this motor is or the quality of it. There's grease fittings, so we're gonna make sure we grease the whole thing. Uh, just try to give it the best chance it's got. So now we're gonna have to try to put a little bit of a tensioner there. I definitely could have went with a shorter belt. Um, the motor wouldn't have to be on as much of an angle, but it really doesn't matter what angle these motors run at. Uh, these motors can run on table saws, sideways, whatever, so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And it still gives me a whole lot of adjustment on this side. That belt would have to stretch a lot before that would give me any trouble. I'm gonna weld these on as adjusters, so when I tighten up the bolts, it'll push on the frame and tighten up the belt.
you can get the belt off. Okay, you have a pulley and you have a hub with a keyway in it. And you put them together. I find the easiest way is to put the pulley on and then hammer the keyway in once it's lined up. Uh, sometimes it is the easiest way. There we go. So we're going to tap that in. You start tightening them up evenly. Now we'll put the belts back on. So we're going to fire it up and see how it goes. That isn't good. I think I found out what the problem is. See all this masonry dust? That was all in there. That was awful. But the capacitor, be careful you don't get a shock off the capacitor. Okay, so I don't think this capacitor is any more good, but there is a number on it, so I'm going to go see if I can get one. I think it's worth a try. Anyways, this part of the build is done. I, I kind of would have liked it to be completely, completely finished, but you know what? Sometimes it just doesn't go that way. So the next time I work on it, I'll try to put a new capacitor in this motor. And if that doesn't work, I'll probably try to wire it 220. So that's about enough for today, and you guys have a good one.